Okay. Samir, please tell us, tell me about yourself. Uh, sir, I was born in Varda and I spent most of my life in Nagpur. And I'm a chemical engineer and an MBA. And also I've worked in private sector for close to seven years. Uh, my hobbies include uh, running. I seldom watch movies and also play video games. I am known as an optimistic and a jovial person. Right now, I am a part of uh, service. I am a proud railway employee. I am posted as an IITS officer in Raipur Division of Indian Railways. Which division? Raipur Raipur. Division of Indian. It falls, it falls under which uh, zone? Sir, it falls under the Southeast Central Railway Zone of uh, so South Railway. East Central. Yes. See, uh, I think there are close to how many zones are there, uh, Samir, in India? Railway zones. So there are uh, currently there are seventeen zones. Seventeen. So, yes. particularly South East Central Railway Zone, right? Yes, sir. Headquarters it? Uh, it is in Bilaspur, Chhattisgarh. Bilaspur. Can you tell me any unique projects in the last three to four decades taken up by your zone, which is never tried in any other zone in India, or any kind of unique challenges that your zone faces? Both, I want any unique uh, projects or unique challenges of your zone of railways. Yes. So the zone where I'm working is two decades old. So it was carved out in 2003 from uh, Southeastern Railway Zone. So in the past two decades, this zone has been known as one of the highest revenue earners for the Indian railways. In terms of projects, since this zone loads a lot of coal and other minerals for uh, rest of the India, this zone has tried uh, formation of long haul trains. So that is combining two or more trains together, which saves path and also uh, uh, it, it makes the movement quicker. So our crew, which is a precious resource, is saved. Also, uh, because there is heavy uh, loading of freight trains, uh, this zone has also tried to make the loading process quicker so that the wagons are, are the wagon turnout, turnaround is quicker. So we can use same asset uh, quickly. Also, this zone has tried a lot of flyovers so that there, there are no crossings of two trains. Uh, and, and this all is because of uh, the dual responsibility of carrying passengers as well as heavy uh, freight traffic, which falls on this zone. Okay, okay. So it's highest revenue earner in terms of uh, you know, freight, right? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I am not 100% uh, sure about the numbers, but I am sure that it is the second highest uh, revenue earning zone. First is the Eastern Coast Railway. And revenue is uh, freight and passenger put together. Okay. See, now when you're talking about freight and passenger, generally uh, we hear cross subsidy in Indian railways, cross subsidy. Yes. So, do you support cross subsidy? Yes, sir. I support, uh, support it for two, three broader reasons. First, Indian Railway is, a, is, a, is part of the government. And uh, like government, it also has a responsibility of uh, the wel welfare obligations. For an example, lots of migrants, lots of laborers travel by train. Lots of uh, uh, lower middle class and middle class uh, individuals who work in different cities, they also travel by train. And the fares are, are designed in such a manner that they, uh, are, they, they do not cause a heavy burden on their pockets. And if, if otherwise, if we increase fares, then th that would cause inflation that might also reduce the mobility between two cities. And secondly, sir, uh, Indian Railways is intertwined with the society. If you say ra uh, rail tracks, the sidings, uh, rail bridges, crossings, it is heavily, I would say, amalgamated in the city. So citizens are also actually... Uh, uh, seeing that the tracks that which trans, uh, transgresses their city actually benefits them. If we if we start looking at Indian Railways only as a commercial entity, then even people might not uh, uh, see it that much legitimately. So cross subsidy is important, sir. Okay. But see, as you said, Indian Railways is most used by middle class, lower middle class, and hence it's responsibility of the government to provide a subsidy yes, for the passengers, right? Yes, sir. Now, because of this, Indian Railways is unable to compete with the roadways when it comes to carrying the freight. Do you agree with me on this? Uh, yes, sir. I partly agree because uh, there are other reasons which can make it compete, sir. Can you please uh, give two top 
means among suggestions you want to give, tell me two top suggestions. By implementing which Indian railways can even you know dominate the roadways in terms of freight revenue or freight transport. Sir, uh, two suggestions would be firstly, uh, we should do a quicker turnaround of the wagons that we are using and the locomotives and people because if these assets are used efficiently, we can load more commodities in the same number of paths, same number of assets and we can have more revenue. And that can be utilized by proper scheduling and proper running of uh, trains by controllers, of, of which is also one of my responsibilities, uh, a small part of uh, which I play a small part. Sir, uh, secondly, uh, we should also look at the non-fair revenue aspect because Indian Railways owns a lot of land and a lot of resources. And uh, if it look, it can look beyond merely transporting people and, and goods, then it can, look, it, it can have many ways of earning. For an example, if we look at Mumbai uh, CST Railway Station, they are uh, earning a lot of revenue by, the, uh, by, by publicity. And uh, there, there are also uh, newer stations coming up in city center, which are also acting as real estate hubs. So these two suggestions is, is what I feel should be done, sir. To increase the freight transport. Your second suggestion also is towards increasing the freight transport and compared to the roadways? Uh, sir, my uh, second suggestion is more towards increasing the non-fair revenue. And thus, we can rationalize the freight rates to, to make it... Uh, Competitive. Okay. See, you no, know, you are you are telling that one of your responsibilities. You just said that one of your responsibilities is to. You just not telling, no. Uh, yes, sir. To to run the trains efficiently. Okay. So you are uh, operations manager. Yes, sir. I am Oper operations manager of uh, uh, Raipur uh, division. You said. Yes, sir. I am assistant operations manager in okay. Raipur division and assisting okay. my senior. Okay, so see, when you talk about responsibilities, there are things which you learned recently, right? Because you yes, were not aware of these things before you entered the job. Yes. Now, sir. keeping the similar thing in mind, Government of India is talking about IRMS. Yes. However, one major criticism is that the technical, the technical uh, managers of the Indian railways, who manage the construction or, you know, the signaling the technology. Now, can do you think generalists can really manage them? Do you think generalists can really manage the construction? Because in IRMS, they are not recruiting to technical means, right? It's very general in nature. I think that's what I heard. At least, I mean, there is no clarity on that. But what what do you have to say about this, Samir? Uh, yes, sir. Sir, I find railways to be a techno-commercial organization and a very complicated system in itself. So no single person can do justice to all the tasks and department of Indian Railways. So yes, sir, we need people with uh, different specialization manning different departments of uh, railways. And that is why the current uh, mission or vision of the IRMS is to, is to find uh, people of various backgrounds, civil engineering, electronics engineering, and also generalist people like me and place them as in, in accordance with their skills and their uh, educational background and also taking their consent so that they can man the appropriate departments. Uh, uh, sir, there is a challenge. I, I also foresee a challenge of finding uh, adequate number of people per uh, specialization. But sir, it, it is an evolving process. And I, I feel focus should be there to do justice to all departments, technically as well as from a managerial point of view. The present recruitment, what is the status of British recruitment? Is it a generalist exam or technical exam? Present status of IR, IRMS? Uh, sir, I, I am not uh, uh, exactly aware of the end uh, process. However, the uh, recruitment examination is a, is a general civil service examination. And based on the backgrounds, earlier there was a plan to place them uh, at appropriate uh, verticals. No, you mean the examination is the same for everybody, but based on their graduation background, they will place it. Yes, sir. Their graduation background and their consent. Okay. So that's yeah. what we are exploring presently? Uh, sir, uh, I need to uh, get more details on this aspect, sir. Okay. Uh, yes, sir. Okay. See, you know, recently there is an accident. Um, of course, not an accident. There are many, there are many accidents in the last one year. But one accident in Orissa. Have you heard of this? 
Yes, sir. As we record the events of the nation, and you know, collision of two trains is considered to be almost impossible with the present technology. Almost like uh, we are thirty years uh, down the line of the after the invention of IT in the railways also, and even today we have collision of trains. Can you tell me exact reason behind the collision? Uh, yes, sir. The collision of the train was a cause of uh, the malfunctioning of the interlocking system. The railways function on an interlocking system where the train, the points, which is part of the track, and the signalling system, they all uh, work uh, and speak in the same language. In this particular incident, the uh, the points, which is the direction which track provides, and the signal, which is the authority to pass or to or a, or a directive to stop they were talking in different languages the signal was showing the authority to uh, to proceed with uh, high speed however the points were directing uh, to towards the wrong direction a track where a train was already placed sir that 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 was the reason for collision a human error how to completely eliminate the human error think on tell me system Simple system that can be placed with the current technology to avoid such collisions in future. Sir, I have a different view. Uh, a simple system may not uh, help because uh, it is a complicated uh, machinery. Uh, but, sir, yes, there is one simple procedure that we can do whenever we are offering blocks, which is the permission to stop railway traffic for a particular. Uh, maintenance activity we can ensure that when such repair works or blocks are taken then when there is uh, uh, the permission to resume traffic before that there should be thorough testing uh, before actually a passenger train passes there should be uh, testing and uh, also reverse testing of the work so this can be implemented sir and in the long term uh, the system such as kavach uh, which is part of which is uh, implemented in 2000 plus kilometers of the route that should also be expanded to cover the all uh, network. How much is it an expensive system? How much? <clears throat> sir, uh, sorry, I am not aware of the uh, exact cost, but I will read about it, sir. What is the cost of high speed trains in India spanning between Mumbai and Ahmedabad? Ahmedabad, Mumbai and Ahmedabad, high speed train. So the total project cost is uh, around one lakh, uh, uh, one point one lakh crore, sir. In per kilometer, roughly per kilometer, how much is it? Uh, sir, sorry, sir, I need to get these details, sir. Okay. Okay. You are a chemical engineer. You said you are a chemical engineer. Yes, sir. I am. From which college? Sir, uh, VNIT Nagpur, Vishweshwaraya NIT Nagpur. Okay. So after chemical engineering, after doing chemical engineering, you worked somewhere few years? No, sir. After uh, chemical engineering, I was uh, actually exploring uh, future career options. And for, for a year, I was uh, teaching at a CAT training institute. And I, parallelly, I was preparing for CAT. And then I uh, studied MBA. And thereafter, I worked for seven years. Seven years in? Uh, in private sector, sir. Uh, first few years were in a French uh, company where as I was a strategy manager looking after mergers and acquisition and the later three years were in a strategy consulting company Accenture where I was uh, handling merger acquisition and post merger integration projects. Okay, so you was, after doing MBA you mostly worked in the merger acquisition uh, uh, sector only, mostly? Yes sir and uh, marketing and process improvement as well. See, after spending so much time, seven years, gaining, you know, experience in mergers and acquisitions, and, you know, and also, you know, I, I think you might have made good amount of money also. You would have reached a uh, stage in the career where your salary is too high because you are MBA from where? No. Sir, I studied in I am Lucknow. Oh, Lucknow. Then why do you want to come into civil services? You know, it's a complete change in the career, right? You want to think the four years of chemical engineering, Two years of MBA and so on and so forth. Everything is uh, not real useful. Okay. To some extent, not real useful when you once again start your career from the beginning in any of the civil services jobs. Sir, uh, in the later three years of my private sector career, I was a consultant, and 
solving problems uh, was my uh, core job and uh, since beginning uh, my academic career has been such that i al- always uh, wanted fresh challenges and excel in them so sir i when i was uh, working as a consultant i thought that there are more arenas uh, where i can say utilize my skills to solve broader problems and there therefore i was uh, motivated to take up the challenge of firstly appearing for civil services and uh, and qualifying in it because that that was itself a challenge in it and secondly uh, when i look around me there are multiple problems which society uh, faces and where some amount of optimization uh, human decision making and coordination and certain managerial planning within the given set of rules and framework i think can uh, help and that's why i thought i i'll get a broader platform to work sir in civil services okay see uh, while you have knowledge of mergers and acquisitions you no know, yes slightly moving out of it government of india is thinking of privatizing certain you know, parts of indian railways right so if you have to privatize not entire railways some parts of railways tell me the three things that we can prioritize we can privatize privatize without affecting the public interest sir speaking from the speaking as a railway man i would want the uh, maximization of railways interest and public's interest by privatizing so i feel the production process for certain locomotives certain wagons can be privatized and even the signaling equipment because railways practically cannot attract all the best talent which is available in india and the world so that way we can uh, have best of the two worlds which is uh getting the talent and technology and also prim- pro- pro- producing on a large scale and secondly sir the aspect of uh, cleanliness in uh, railways is also what we can uh, privatize uh because uh, railways cannot have higher head count and maintain cleanliness everywhere but uh, if we employ contractors and have specific kpis for them uh, to perform that that would also be uh, good and thirdly sir indian railways also needs to have a commercial accounting system so as to have a fair view on where are the cost elements and where are the uh, earning elements and for that we can prioritize the ideation bit of uh, of which system to implement for accounting and how to implement and also the software part if needed so if i say construction see generally most of the government projects construction are outsourced these days the call for tenders similarly if i say in railways also construction is gone continuously you know flyovers bridges tunnels large heavy engineering constructions don't you think we can outsource them to the best uh, you know private organizations globally so that they can do it cost effectively and using the best technology don't you think we can privatize that yes sir we can privatize but i believe we can privatize it to the extent of uh, epc engineering procurement and construction bit uh, because if we see world over and even in india the privatization of infrastructure is feasible feasible when uh, the private party can earn revenue out of it and indian railways revenue system is uh, is complicated is people oriented and also is uh, is the economy oriented so private party can contribute with best of their technology and quality however th- i believe they can be paid as uh, contractors from railway zone revenue planning sir okay so you talking about revenue see revenue is presently indian railways in profits or loss presently as per last year last uh, fiscal year fiscal year sir uh, technically the operating ratio was 98.1 so we were uh, having some surplus uh i i am i may not to be sure to call it profit but we have some surplus sir first of all does india indian railways has a system to at least identify whether they are in profits or losses is there a proper account system to as like an independent organization do they have an account system to understand whether they are in profits or losses division wise journal wise and overall national wise 
सॉरी सर रिगार्डिंग दी डिविजन जोन वाइज अकाउंटिंग प्रैक्टिस आई एम नॉट वेरी श्योर आई विल गेट डिटेल्स ऑन दिस बट दिस इज ऑल्सो वन रिक्वायरमेंट दैट वी नीड टू हैव कमर्शियल अकाउंटिंग टू ट्रीट देम एज बिजनेस यूनिट्स टू लुक एट प्रॉफिटेबिलिटी एंड एज अट पैन इंडिया लेवल सर वी हैव एन अकाउंटिंग प्रैक्टिस विच कंप्यूट्स ऑपरेटिंग रेशियो बाय 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 कंसिडरिंग दी ऑपरेटिंग एक्सपेंसिस एज वेल एज दी ऑपरेटिंग रेवेन्यू and by that we can deduce if there is a is a surplus but i am not 100% sure about the profit profitability sir you know man level persons this is eliminating no indian railways yes oh, of course man and man both level persons eliminating right what is the target yeah. what is the target in your division last year sorry sir i need to get details on this sir i will no. go through it have seen any elimination of uh, manual Manned or unmanned level crossing in your division in the last few months in Raipur division. Sir, in my short tenure, I am yet to come across such uh, example because some of the crossings were already eliminated, sir. Anything innovative you have done in the last uh, how many months? Or were you in railways? Sir, around, around five day. months. Around five months of posting and before that training. Oh, just five months of posting. Oh, leave it. Yeah. See. You are a chemical engineer. Tell me, what are the major chemical engineering exports or imports from India or to India? Sir, broadly, we are uh, exporting the refined crude oil and the petroleum products, which are uh, which are derivative of the uh, crude oil refining. For an example, naphthalene, tar, uh, fuel oil, etc. We are also exporting some of the organic chemicals. Uh, so such as uh, alcohols aldehydes uh, etc et uh, to uh, to countries and we are also exporting esters which can uh, which can form textiles such as polyesters to other countries see in the manufacture of fertilizers i mean in india in india in the manufacture of fertilizers what the, what are the major raw materials we use sir uh, urea is a major uh, uh, fertilizer apart from that we need elements of nitrogen potassium and uh, calcium uh, sorry uh, uh, nitrogen phosphorus and potassium in various proportions and uh, for uh, forming urea nitrogen uh, and uh, and water and methane are uh, key ingredients sir are the raw materials uh, i am not very sure about other raw materials sir But let me rephrase the question. What are the major raw materials India use in the manufacturing of fertilizers? Sir, I need to get. Uh, sorry, sir, I need to get some details on this. Sir. Okay, okay. See, as a chemical engineer, why you do not want to, not only chemical engineer, generally, I mean, that V N A T college is a good college, no? Yes. How many chemical engineers from your class have really gone to the core chemical engineering jobs? In your class, what can you put? Sir, I am not very sure about the number. However, as a thumb rule, around uh, in our batch of sixty, around fourteen uh, to fifteen people uh, got core chemical engineering jobs, and which they continued. They continued till today in the last ten years. Sir, some of the I am not in contact with okay. uh, with most, but sir the. Uh, uh, the friends which got posted in public sector undertakings, they are uh, continuing with their jobs. Don't you think, based on the placements, we have to, you know, change the number of seats available? For example, chemical engineering, we need Nagpur. Nagpur, right? We need Nagpur. Yes. Sir. Looking at last ten years, out of sixty uh, seventy, if only ten forty people are going into actual chemical engineering, why don't we reduce the number of twenty five or thirty? Ensure that all 25 or 30 get into chemical, not all 25, but majority get into chemical engineering. Why should we keep this the 60 number seat? Then most of them are not going into chemical engineering. Do you think it's time to change number of seats in all engineering colleges in India, across India, looking at the placements of the last 10 years, whatever? Yes, sir. Sir, but there are uh, multiple factors uh, which play a role. For an example, for placements, the performance of indian economy as well as uh, the global economy and government uh, schemes for promoting industry they are also a factor for placements secondly sir there are also individual preferences 
few individuals may not want to get placed and may want to pursue higher studies there would be few individuals who would while pursuing higher studies may want to change career path because uh, sir as i from my own experience and by, and after looking at my friends engineering is also a process which uh, teaches an individual uh, designing uh, a process uh, getting a proper output of the process and managing risks of the of the of any particular process and this analogy can be applied anywhere so sir i believe yes uh, it would be good if uh, people are working in their core sectors but reducing seats as per placements uh may, may we may not be able to have a proper formula for that and also we would restrict people uh, i mean by uh, from ex- from exercising their other choices sir. okay so you're talking about economy you're telling about indian economy yes sir. and there is always debate between economy and uh, environmental conservation yes, same sir. debate is there in the indian rail indian railways also wherever there is a huge forest land and when we are doing a linear projects like indian like railway line linear projects but we we'll consider the thick forest in assam or meghalaya and when we have to construct the railway track without affecting affecting the wildlife without affecting the wildlife are there any good plans the indian railways to construct a track in a thick and dense forest without impacting the wildlife and ecosystem so there are Uh, operational plan as well as a uh, structural plan in terms of structural plan the railways tend to have uh, bridges so as not to impact the movement corridor this is especially true for the elephant corridors in assam and uh, kerala and in terms of operational plan sir there are gangmans visiting tracks so whenever they see they see a herd of elephants they actually alert the uh, the loco pilots and stations and another operational plan is to have a permanent speed restriction in such corridors uh, because broadly sir these measures have to be put in place uh, because if we have to reach the remote uh, places of countries uh, then transgressing forest in some cases is uh, necessary sir okay so how long you stayed in maharashtra in your life until till college till your engineering Beyond that also, sir. After I was born, I continuously stayed in Nagpur till twenty-two uh, years till my graduation. Oh, oh you were born. Miss Puri is also Nagpur only. Yes, sir. See this Nagpur. I mean, which is also the most important city in the eastern Maharashtra in the Vidarbha area. Vidarbha area. Yes, Do you think is culturally? That your Vidarbha is quite different from the Western Maharashtra, the remaining part of Maharashtra. Vidarbha, the remaining part of Maharashtra. Do you think the cultural difference, Samir? Yes, sir. There are certain differences, but not very radically different. The reason for having differences is because Nagpur is a melting pot. So it it used to be the part of central provinces. It is also very close to Chhattisgarh, and it is also very close to Telangana. so even for say medical uh, reasons or for for uh, for family ties there is lot of intermingling between people and if i see nagpur as as a city then it is a mini india where uh, many uh, communities uh, people speaking many languages they reside uh, however there are also similarities sir the common language is marathi although the dialect is different in uh, nagpur uh, nagpur was also for some part ruled by bhosle uh, leaders who also had uh, certain connections with uh, the leaders uh, the rulers of western maharashtra and uh, in terms of religiousness the food uh, the, the varkari sampraday is also revered in nagpur and uh, in terms of food preferences also there are some similarities sir so in a nutshell yes sir it is there are differences but there are commonalities as well okay okay so see present your change it is here And you know, it is getting formed over two, de- two decades back. It is getting yes, formed, sir. right? And uh, in these two decades, it is getting has shown good improvement compared to, to the improvement it had undergone when it was part of Madhya Pradesh. Madhya Pradesh. You know, looking at you know, it is getting development. Maybe in the last, I think, five six months, you are it is getting. Yes. Sir. Have you ever thought, Miss, looking close at it is getting? At Raipur, where you are presently located, situated. In comparison, don't you think 
you know, carving out Vidarbha from Maharashtra can really see such kind of improvement like you, you see in Chhattisgarh. Yes, sir. I I see at pros and cons as well of uh, carving out Vidarbha. Uh, firstly, coming to Chhattisgarh, the reason for carving out is because Chhattisgarh was uh, remotely located when compared to certain districts of uh, Madhya Pradesh and also the capital. And also the tribal culture and the issues which Chhattisgarh faced were different than the rest of the Madhya Pradesh. Hence, the rationale for carving out Chhattisgarh for me appears to be different. In terms of Vidarbha, sir, uh, rather than saying that Vidarbha faced a development deficit, I believe that Mumbai, Pune and the Nasik area of Maharashtra, they attracted lots of uh, of uh, capital and industries right from the independence and even before it because of their location and other factors such as human capital, education, etc. So, uh, I believe, sir, while being in Maharashtra, Vidarbha can... Uh, get developed quicker because whenever there is a magnetic Maharashtra summit, uh, there can be the same uh, setup can also attract infrastructure for for Vidarbha. And, and lastly, sir, Vidarbha is well integrated with uh, Maharashtra in terms of connectivity, in terms of people to people ties. So, for Vidarbha, I believe the situation is different, and being in Maharashtra can help us have brotherly relation as well as uh, grow. Tell me three reasons why Vidarbha will grow if it is Maharashtra. Has it grown in the last 30 40 years? Has it Vidarbha grown? Has Vidarbha grown because of being with Maharashtra? Yes, sir. There was, uh, there was a deficit, a development deficit in Vidarbha, but that was more because uh, the other parts of Maharashtra attracted. Uh, in, terms of, um, in terms of being with Maharashtra, Firstly, the uh, the connectivity uh, of Vidarbha with Maharashtra is improving and that is why the industries in Mumbai can have their linkages of supply chain of offices in Vidarbha. That is uh, one reason, sir. Also, uh, while Vidarbha is energy surplus, uh, the western parts of Maharashtra are, are uh, revenue generating and therefore government can spend uh, in Vidarbha by, by balancing out all the earnings and all the expenditures in Maharashtra. And lastly, sir, uh, by by uh, have, by being in Vidarbha, the law and order situation, the human capital, for an example, the standard of education, etc., can be maintained at par with the rest of Maharashtra. And we can also compete with, say, colleges and professionals in Maharashtra uh, by by having the same overarching system, sir. Okay, okay. And you said that you love running. Yes, sir. So running means generally, uh, what is different between jogging and running? Sir, I'm not uh, aware of the uh, the quantitative difference, but jogging is slightly slower at around 7 to 8.5 km per hour speed. I usually run at around 9.5 to 10, lesser than 10 speed, sir. How long do you run? Sir, I run these days for around 20 to 21 minutes. No, uh, no, I cover, no, 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 distance, distance. I, I cover, sir, uh, around 3 to 3.2 kilometers in uh, 20 to 22 minutes. Daily? Uh, not daily, sir. Uh, it depends on uh, the the uh, workload and commitment. But I tend to run five days a week if I am given a choice. See, uh, the, there are these competitions, right? athletics, running competitions. Yes, sir. There, these three three kilometers, four kilometers, or telling does it fall into short distance or long distance? Sir, it is. Uh, it would form a very short distance uh, because the half marathons runs are for around 21 kilometers and the 5k runs organized they are also for 5 kilometer long run so this is more of an amateur for uh, fitness uh, running sir. so in this uh, long distance short distance running who should have more bmi generally which athletes should have more bmi the short track athletes or long track athletes sir it depends on the speed as well however going by number of uh, calories burnt the uh, the short distance uh, runner, if running at a very uh, moderate speed, then he should have longer BMI. Sorry, higher BMI. No, not moderate speed. Generally, athletes, interest athletes, short track, long track. Who will have more BMI? Sir, then long track would have uh, a longer BMI because shorter distance athletes... Longer BMI at... or higher, higher BMI? Uh, so, yes, sir. Greater BMI. Who long distance? Yes, sir. Why? 
so because short distance running is more about a light uh, running at a lightning fast speed so as to uh, have uh, records uh, broken and made so they need to be very agile sir so they should have a lower bmi yes sir they should have a lower bmi and why long distance should have higher bmi sir uh, because if uh, somebody wants to run 20 kilometers but not at a uh, given uh, within a given span of time then that person can also say run at 7 kilometers per hour speed or 8 kilometers per hour speed and my might run intermittently as well so few times in a year so going by this logic sir i feel they can have uh, probability is that they can have higher bmi do you know what bmi is right yes sir it is body mass index sir Okay, okay. See, as you are a, as you run literally almost three four kilometers, what kind of problems do you get in your legs? These long distance runners or those who run regularly, what kind of problems they get in their leg generally? Sir, at times I in, feel. In, in any kind of injuries, the, I mean the most common injuries. Sir, shin splint is uh, something which uh, happens uh, not very frequently, but it happens. Can and then the, the name i could not understand the name shin splint sir shin splint ah, okay. shin splint yes ah, okay it, ah. it it happens at the uh, uh, vertical portion of our uh, leg and there is also one uh, problem which i personally faced uh, i i inquired about it it was called plantar fasciitis when the uh, the feet was uh, stretched and uh, put under strain for a longer time then i faced that problem and there is another problem i faced i do not remember the name sir but on the on the inner portion of the knee i faced uh, some pain and while sleeping i had to put uh, pillows between uh, my knees so that is another problem sir okay shin splint is for the muscle or the bones sir uh, i am not very uh, sure about it sir but uh, from what i remember it it was about muscles muscles hmm. Yes, sir, but I'm not hundred percent sure, sir. It is on. It is based on my experience, sir. Okay, okay. And you said that you do video. One second. You said video editing, right? What is it? Video. Sir, yes, sir. I used to play video games. That that used video to be games. one of my hobbies. Yes, sir. Video games. Which you did not mention in the app, right? Yes, sir. Your secretary, I am like my students' counselor. I think it's the highest position, no, among the students. Uh, so president was the highest position. Oh, president, I'm not secretary. Yes. Placement operations, okay. What is my student beacon award? Sir, I put in place a system using Excel, uh, the macro coding, VBA coding. So that automated some part of uh, one of our projects, which was to have a post-merger integration uh, setup for two companies. And because of some automation, we saved a lot of time, and we also got insights about which particular individual is doing what at at what location and using which system and which processes. So leading to this, sir, my client and my superiors were happy at the innovation. and therefore i got this uh, consolation award from accenture consulting okay so the fundamental idea is you have automated some things which previous used to manual am i right yes sir hmm yes sir did you automate anything in the in railways in, in your division as a operations manager i mean assistant something did you automate something no sir i am yet to have a significant uh, impact as far as automation but i as as the precursor to automation i have uh, i am ensuring that some of the pen and paper uh, data and decisions that we used to take are now being put in system on spreadsheets uh, i see the next step would be to generate insights and then automate sir what is it cadillac award what is it cadillac award sir i was part of uh, the french company and i roamed across uh, some indian markets also parts of raipur i found that the uh, the small scale industry the steel rolling mills etc they wanted some low quality uh, low priced brick uh, the alumina refractory brick and i passed on information and got this brick uh, developed and also priced suitably so for that uh, incremental sales i was given an award what is alumina 
So alumina is a compound of aluminium. Uh, the formula is Al2O3. And when it is mixed with certain other elements, then it uh, produces high temperature resistance property, and it is used in high temperature, high corrosion, high abrasion processes. And how do you get aluminium? Basically, what is the process of manufacturing aluminium, extracting whatever? Sir, so it is found mostly in terms of uh, an ore, bauxite, and the reserves are found in some parts of uh, Orissa, Jharkhand, and e even some parts of Madhya Pradesh. Sir. The uh, the bauxite is extracted. Uh, I am not sure about the next process, but it is a derivative of this ore, sir. Does it consume very less electric energy? Extraction of aluminium from bauxite. No, sir. Uh, I am sorry, sir. I am not able to recall the exact process, but it it involves some electric arc furnace for uh, processing, sir. See, in chemical engineering, do you study this kind of? Uh, Extraction of, you know, metals from the ore. No, sir. I have not uh, studied any such uh, extraction, but sir, process design is uh, a mandate of chemical engineers. Hmm. Okay. See, uh, on for Republic Day of India, who is the chief guest? So the Honorable President of uh, Republic of France, uh, Mr. Emmanuel Macron. Okay. Why? Why India has called, uh, you know, France president to be chief guest? Specifically, why France at this time? In, in this year, what is the relevance of France with India? To India. So it was uh, a complicated decision. Firstly, because the first choice was having uh, U.S. president, uh, Mr. Joe Biden. And uh, when he was not available as a second choice, we had to invite a, a friendly nation with very deep ties who would also uh, understand the context of invitation. That is why we invited them. In terms of uh, in terms of uh, significance, sir, uh, we our uh, honourable prime minister visited their Bastille Day parade, and uh, we also uh, env envisioned uh, the Horizon 2047 roadmap on people, planet, and uh, strategic, uh, uh, say, contours. We are uh, buying marine French uh, Rafale planes from them. We are deepening our partnership. They are the second uh, largest source of import for us. We are also working on helicopters, submarines, and uh, engines. So, And they are also wanting to promote the student exchange uh, from India. So, sir, there is an all-round uh, partnership which is uh, uh, growing. And this is the sixth time uh, a French president is being invited, sir. Sixth time? Yes, sir. You are talking about Rafael, right? Yes, sir. What is so special about Rafael that India has to purchase it from France? Many countries make the same kind of aircraft, right? Yes, sir. Sorry, sir, I do not have the exact comparison. But from what I could recall, it is a fifth uh, generation aircraft and we had certain Russian and US made and Swedish aircrafts uh, uh, in competition. However, uh, based on the, uh, the uh, customization that they offered for our armed forces, uh, they were bought with due diligence. Can you tell me more about technology transfer happened because of purchasing Rafael? Sorry, sir, I need to get details on this, sir. Do you know India has purchased Rafael mainly because of technology transfer? Do you think so? Sorry, sir, I'm not able to recall this aspect, but uh, yes, sir, from what I can uh, recall, there was a customization aspect and some maintenance related technology transfer aspect which was offered to us. Tell me about defense manufacturing in India. The new policies, major changes happened in the last few years in the defense manufacturing. Any major policy changes? Change in FDI, anything? Yes, sir. We want to uh, become a major defense exporter. For that, we have taken two, three broader steps. Firstly, we have um, uh, mandated a positive list of items which need to be produced indigenously. Secondly, we are also focusing on the defense uh, testing infrastructure scheme for giving domestic companies uh, the testing infrastructure, which is capital intensive. 
thirdly we are also having defense uh, corridors for an example in uh, tamil nadu in uttar pradesh for uh, promoting defense industry the fdi relaxations fdi relaxations have been also put in place for certain uh, uh, defense related manufacturing and there is a large private sector uh, 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 we are encouraging them for an example in in uh, aerospace uh, tata uh, uh, hcl uh, mahindra they are tying up with foreign companies for uh, manufacturing sir hmm okay dear from i am lucknow yes sir is it a university yes sir it was a deemed university are you sure about that yes sir is why not university why deemed university what is different between university and deemed university sir uh, sorry sir i am not uh, 100% sure on this aspect sir this can be do do i it does i am not to like in the rank in the international rankings of the colleges anywhere in top 100 200 sir as far as i recall no it, it was not in uh, top uh, 100 or 200 sir i am not what is the what is the problem with the aim like come in comparison to the top colleges why is not ranking among top sir uh, when compared to the other top iims in india that is i am ahmedabad bangalore and calcutta i am lucknow is uh, is fairly uh, relatively younger i am and when we have uh, many alumni at the apex position and when they retire from them and uh, also when we have many faculty members and uh, many research papers then the reputation grows so this is the, the relative comparison but at world stage sir i believe we are also uh, producing uh, top mba graduates and uh, the world ranking which is there is also perception based the uh, number of uh, uh, student exchanges number of foreign faculties and perception of foreign recruiters so that is why we miss out on foreign rankings do you want to ask anything for ending session no sir thank you for uh, giving the opportunity but uh, i think i am fine sir okay